I love St. Augustine. They'll probably bury me here. I have lived all over the country and there is no place more magical and mysterious than St. St. Augustine is a fairy tale town. You know, it's big castles and it's horses and old graveyards and the lighthouse. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love St. Augustine. It takes four hours to completely set up and be ready to work. Like I said, we, we were we were wild little kids. There was nothing to do where we grew up. There was absolutely nothing except pretty much get in trouble. If they'd have had a roller skating rink, you know, or a movie theater, something for us to do, I think a lot of people would have grown up and been better people. Now we had gas station parking lots, car washes, and snakes. When I brought the snake in the house when I was little, if my mama would have said, Jeremy, get that snake out and don't bring him in here no more, I ain't playing with you, that would have been the end of it. But she had uh, to throw a big melodramatic fit, scream and holler, lock herself in the room, pray to Jesus, talk in tongues, call daddy at work, and you know, I, I didn't get in any trouble, but uh, but still, once once my brother and I saw that response from my mother, that, that undeniable, true to life fear, there was nothing fake about it. We knew how to get mama, you, you can't do that to us, you can't let us get you like that. She had a routine, she'd come home, check on us, Go get in the bed and watch, go with the wind or pride and prejudice, and then go to work. It was a routine. My brother and I would go lift her blanket back and put a little snake in there and cover him up. When that snake's in that blanket and he's nice and covered and he feels safe, he don't go anywhere. So my brother and I would wait patiently for mama to go in there and pull back the blanket and scream. The snake would be in the bed or on the floor somewhere. But yeah, I, I think that's what got me into him, you know, it is scaring mama. What you doing, little pal? Can you see everything up there? Yeah, make you feel better. Oh, see? You see, I was telling you about that woman. She wasn't at the Dollar General. I'd have had her tell you about it. But they do took a shotgun and shot one of these. Yeah. This is a wild animal and it don't even bite. See, they only bite when they're scared for their lives. See, that's the trick. See, if I'm not scared, I'm not gonna bite. See, I pull him up here by my lips, he might get scared. What's he doing, buddy? All right, buddy, we gotta get to work. Let me get some more. Don't 
good for business. But that, that's a lot of the reason I, that I do this is, um, is there is a very strong, irrational fear about these animals, you know? People, people see a corn snake on the porch or in the house and they think the devil's there, you know? Grab the shovel, shoot the gun in the house, kill the snake. And it, it, this animal, the only thing it has to defend itself with it is these little bitty tiny teeth, you know? If you and this animal have to fight for your life in the woods, the only thing a human has to do to win is this. You can literally step on his tail and kill him. So it's an irrational fear that's put in our heads. They have a very serious place in the ecosystem and a relationship with humans. Like the Black Plague was spread continent to continent by rats on boats. That's, that's these guys' little jobs, man. They're, they're not demons trying to give my girlfriend forbidden fruit. They're, um, they're, they're God's little rat eaters, you know? They eat what kills us. That, that, that's, that's their purpose. Say that you do this to help people, like, overcome the fear of snakes. Like, did the snakes ever help you at all in any way? You really want that story? Oh, yeah. I try to keep it short, but um, when I was 16, I had something very tragic happen to me, and it uh, it drove me into alcoholism. By the time I was 20, I was physically dependent on alcohol. Um, when it was time for me to quit, uh, I had cirrhosis of the liver by the age of 38. Um, when it was time to quit, and I was going through the DTs and the withdrawals and it, 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 I, I can't even explain, there's not words to describe the nightmare. But these snakes, I, I couldn't talk to people. Uh, I wasn't social. I'd put one of these snakes around my neck and I wasn't paranoid about what was behind me. It, it took away a lot of the fear. Um, and if they, do you call it an emotional support animal? These snakes had a big part of me sobering up of my sobriety, it was, it was a healing thing. I felt comfort, I had a girlfriend, she didn't really give a shit about, you know, she still wanted to drink. She hated my snakes too. But yeah, um, haven't had a drink in five years. And I went from staying in that homeless shelter to, to owning a piece of property, a boat, two Mustangs, got a pretty girlfriend. Or that would be me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you know. The, 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 the snakes played a big part in that. But yeah, that, that's, uh, that's what they did for me. They, they kind of walked me through the, they, they walked through the gates of sobriety with me, you know what I mean? Yep, yep, they're sweet little babies. Uh, it was hard for me to, to talk to people. When you've been drinking your whole life and that's all you know, all your friends are alcoholics. When I don't have anything to alcohol, you become a lonely ass person, man. You don't know what to do. These snakes kept me busy. They were, uh, it was a conversation piece. It was a, it was opening up a can of worms. You take them to the beach and you meet everybody. So it, it, when you see people just mortified and recurring nightmares, a lot of people hold the snakes. And when they have a physical contact, a, a physical encounter, and that little snake's sweet to them. A lot of it, you can see it in their faces. That fear they've held on to, it, it leaves them. And, and they're free from it. Some people come back and they say, I don't have bad dreams anymore. They say, I saw a snake in the yard and I talked to it, you know. I didn't run and lock my... And um, this, this little thing I do, it turns over money. But um, that, that, that's not what it's really all about, you know. It, it, it's it's more than studying the animal. It's studying the human reaction to the animal. It is the most it is the funnest part about it. To be able to give something back to the world, to leave it a a better place than the way you found it. These snakes give me that opportunity too.